Okay, today we're going to talk about how to import objects into Altera. And I'm going to assume that you know how to model. I'm not going to cover modeling, just basically the import process and a couple of things to pay attention to as you model. Uh, you know, because we're importing things with the idea of using it with uh, MovieZoo later, since the environment of Altera is different than MovieZoo, in, in certain ways, uh, we've got to have some workarounds. Uh, but because we use MovieZoo, we're used to workarounds, so that's not a problem, right? Uh, in this case, uh, in, in MovieZoo, you could move characters in and out of vehicles, but uh, you can't do that yet in Altera. So if you want a MovieZoo character that um, is maybe going to appear in another part of your movie that's, that's being recorded in MovieZoo, you're going to have to actually model the character into the prop so that you can move it around the Altera landscape. And so what I've done here is I've, I've modeled a character that looks kind of like a movie zoo character and I've just sort of popped him in here. Uh, this is no great modeling, it's just an example, quick and dirty example to create uh, an illustration of how to do this. There are a, a couple of different considerations for modeling and one of them has to do with importing models that have textures but I'm going to show you a simpler way because I've, I've recently discovered that you can import models into Altera that don't have textures at all simply by highlighting your surfaces. And, and I think that all modeling programs will let you do this. You, you can model surfaces and then from your material editor, you can assign a color to those surfaces. So this entire model is, is colored that way. It's, it's basically I highlighted certain areas. Uh, I'll show you sort of a, this gives me the ability to select by a color. So all of these surfaces were painted painted red. And so uh, and, and the nice thing is that that'll come into uh, Altera very nicely. And we won't have to worry about converting the textures to DDS format. But we will cover that in a different tutorial. For now, we're just going to do the, the quickest, easiest, shortest distance between two points. So that's one thing that I wanted you to see is that, that basically uh, I actually do have a one one texture and that's the man because I use him a couple places and I did texture him. But uh, everything else is just colors on surfaces. Now one thing that will become important later, anytime that I create a texture that's going to be glass, I name the texture glass. And the reason I do that is so that it shows up uh, when you open a material uh, file, it's just a bunch of numbers unless you've got things labeled. And we're going to want to set the, the opacity of glass, so we need to know which one of the materials in the material file is supposed to be transparent. So that's why I enable this glass. In a subsequent tutorial, we're going to automate this rotor. But for now, for this exercise, we're just going to bring it in and float it around. But any time that you want to automate something in Altera, you're going to have to keep it separate from the rest. When I select objects, the speedboat, when it's selected, you notice that the rotor is not selected. And when I select the rotor, they're separate. Now it's, it's important that we, uh, that we assign a parent and child, and, and my software can't do that, so I'm going to have to do that in Blender. But one thing that I can do here, I want to get the center of gravity pretty low because when you're moving things around in, in Altera, if the center of gravity is not pretty low, things will tend to flip over. Um, and I'm assuming that you know how to do this in your editor. But I can, I can move this manipulator. And I'm going to put it pretty low. And I think that that's going to end up being the center of gravity. So I'm going to do that before I save it. This I do want the, uh, the manipulator on this to be in the direction that I can rotate it around. But if it's not, that, that's not a deal killer. But for right now, those are considerations for the future. Okay, so now I've, I've got a model made and I'm ready to export. I need to highlight, save selected objects, speedboat. Now I'm done in my modeling program. 
Now we go to Blender. We have to go to Blender for a couple reasons. First of all, well, I'll show you. We import the model we just created. Okay, I, I should have mentioned, but I didn't, that any time that you create a model that's probably going to be a vehicle later on, you need to model it so that, well, it actually doesn't appear to be the case. In, in my software, I modeled it so that it was facing in a, a Z minus direction, but in, this, but in this software, it shows it to be pointing in a Z plus direction, so I don't know. Maybe, maybe not all modeling programs have of the same convention but whatever your modeling software is you're, you're going to see pretty quickly when, when you get it into Altera if you if you try to drive forward and it goes backwards then you've got it oriented backwards so I, I know that this is already oriented correctly because I've had this into Altera already so it, it could be that if you're using if you're using a blender for the whole job orient it so that the boat is facing in the same direction as the green arrow Okay, so now I got to accomplish three things here. First of all, I'm going to open this section just a little bit. Right now you notice that the propeller and the speedboat in this hierarchy, they're at the same level of hierarchy. The speedboat needs to be the parent of the, of the propeller. Anything that rotates needs to be a child of, of the main model. And the way you do that is you select the child first, and then shift click so you've got them both collected uh, selected at the same time but you want the, the parent to be selected last then you come over to the object menu object parent object click it once and then object again so now you see over here when you click this plus that the prop is a child to the speedboat now another thing, right now I've got the, the prop clicked, but the axis is showing to be where we where we placed it for the center of gravity on the boat itself. We need to have an axis for the prop. Right now, for some reason, when I export from my program to come into Blender, it, it relocates all of the elements. It puts puts the uh, center at the same place, and we need to change that. So to change that, I click Prop, make sure that it's the selected item. Come down to the Object menu again. And then I come up to uh, Transform. Origin to Geometry. And what that's going to do is it's, it's going to move the, the origin of rotation so that it is actually located on the thing that's going to rotate. So once I click this, you'll see the uh, the widget move to the propeller. And there we go. Now the propeller has its own center of rotation. So what we've done is we've parented parented the prop to the boat. We've we've moved the center of ro rotation to the prop. And also you notice that when I click the speedboat, its its widget is still where we put it for center of gravity. So we've now now we've got two widgets instead of just one. Okay, so now the third thing we need to do is export as FBX. So file, export, FBX. And you can set all this stuff, uh, you know, normally I would set things, I would set geometry to be smooth. Let's go ahead and do that. Look for face. That'll, that'll smooth it out some. And then uh, save as speedboat FBX. Okay, now we're done in Blender. The only thing we did in Blender was three things. Parented the prop to the boat. We moved the center of rotation to the prop. And we saved it as an FBX. And after that, we're done with Blender. Okay, so now we come 
to Altera. In Altera, we've got to import the FBX we just created. Okay, we're in the Altera environment, and to open the importer, control F7. And the FBX importer looks like this. You click Open FBX. Navigate your way to uh, Speedboat. Here's the, here's the Speedboat that we just created. And then click Open. Okay, now you can see, this is, this is what Altera sees. It sees a project called Speedboat. It sees a parent model called speedboat and it sees a child model called prop it also sees it also imported the lamp and the camera we don't want those so one at a time we're going to click on the camera and over here it says do not import click that same thing for lamp click that do not import click that prop the prop uh, right now we're just importing this and if you were just importing a uh, an object like a house that was not going to have any moving parts you don't need to do this step but we're going to use this model for double duty we're going to actually animate this model later so anytime you want to animate any of any of the child objects that are going to move you need to tell that to convert to bone click that they don't have to be rigged. Don't be confused by the terminology convert to bone. You don't have to have them rigged if, in order to move it. You just basically have to have it clicked here to be converted to, to bone. Okay. Now, having done that, we, we've told these two, camera and lamp, not to be imported. We've told this to be treated as something that's going to move. Now we come to the very top element in the hierarchy and click it. And we click Create Package. And you're going to get this DOS-like window. And when it says import complete, close, close, and then escape to call up your sandbox menu, and quit. Okay, so now we're going to go. And, and what I do is I create a, uh, a shortcut because... Uh, if you're working with Altera, you're gonna. There's a bunch of different places where you're gonna need to go to regularly, and uh, I've got a shortcut for packages that have been created by users like me. So I go there, and uh, the packages folder is where if, you, if you've installed any of the stuff that I posted on on the Enazu site for you to for you to uh, install, uh, it'll show up in packages under the name of the person who created it. So these are all other people who have created content and this is my folder so I'm going to double click here and there's the speedboat that I just created click on that and uh, now it's got a bunch of junk in here that you probably won't see if when you first do this because I've been working on this for a couple of days but uh, the thing that you do want to look at is uh, speedboat material this is the material file you want to open that and uh, I should probably show you that if, that if you open it with Notepad, these are formatted pretty messy. It would be very hard to, to edit this. So I have a, uh, a JavaScript editor which formats stuff automatically, and it's a, it's a useful thing to have. You probably need to get one because you're going to be working in scripts, and you're going to need to uh, be able to see the difference between comments and statements and so on and so forth. It's color-coded. So, if, but, it, but it also formats regular files, so we're going to use it to open just about everything. And you see, now now when we open it, it's, it's formatted very nicely. And I'm looking for glass. Right there it is. This very first one is my glass. So in order to make the glass uh, some degree of transparency, two things you need to change here. Diffuse, which is this entry and color which is this entry they're basically both the same thing and these are red green blue and alpha so this last one right now it's one that means it's totally opaque 
let's change that to say 0.5 that'll make it halfway transparent and the same thing down here in color we'll change that to 0.5 Okay, that's the only thing we need to change in here. Uh, the one thing that was textured, it automatically changed the texture name to mantexture.dds. And I'll cover using GIMP to, to change the actual like JPEG texture to a DDS. But for right now, just be aware that, uh, that the import process automatically changed this to .dds. And uh, I have already created that. I'm not going to show it in this tutorial. But everything else, everything else here doesn't include. You notice that all of the, uh, all of the textures, anything that starts with text, text albedo, text normal, text roughness, they're all empty because there's no texture used. It's it's only relying on these numbers for the diffuse, and color, to color the object because that's how I painted it. Okay, so now we'll save that, get out of it, and for right now, uh, we're not going to do anything else. We're just going to uh, we're just going to bring it into Altera. Okay, so here we are in Altera, and we're going to uh, we're going to load the object. From the assets menu that we just created and imported into into the assets folder and uh, we haven't told Altera that it's a boat yet so uh, I want you to see what's going to happen if we try to create it in the water it'll sink so just to show you that F7 to call up our assets menu assets in their alph alphabetical order so we're going to scroll down to speedboat right there okay you can see that that uh, it is in fact the speedboat but it's underwater so I'm going to delete that. We can put it on the ground here. So F7 to call up the assets menu. Assets. Scroll down to speedboat. Click on it. And then we'll click again to place it. So you see that it came in okay. It's got it. It's colored and everything because we didn't do anything. Uh, with textures to screw that up. You can see that the uh, the glass that we assigned 50% transparency uh, that worked. So now uh, w one of the things that's difficult when you bring items into Altera is that it's such a huge environment it's really hard to get an idea of whether things are proportioned correctly. Uh, you know because you see huge distances at a time like right now um, we see trees in the background that are almost the same size as this. So with perspective, it's hard to hard to get a handle on actual size. So one way that you can test to see if your uh, if your models are sized correctly, there's a a character in the assets that, that comes with the standard package. It's it's up at the top where the folders are, and it's called Guy. So it's a folder, so you have to double-click on it to get inside the folder. And either one of these two guys, click on the guy, and you bring them out. So that looks like it may be a little big, I don't know. It's hard to tell. But we're in the ballpark. Um, you know, if, if you bring all of your characters into the environment with the same sizing, then, you know, for, for your purposes, you know, we're not really going to be interacting with this guy. Um, so as long as you bring all of your stuff in at the same scale, it'll work. Okay. So now, uh, the next question is, how do we get the boat to float? Because uh, we just put it in the water and it doesn't float. 
Okay. Uh, in order to answer that question, we're going to have to F7 to exit the Assets menu, Escape to call up the main menu, and quit. We need to get out of Altera. Go back to my uh, shortcuts. Go to my uh, Packages, to my folder, and to the Speedboat folder. Now here's something you're going to have to... Um, edit pretty often. This is the object definition. So I'm going to click on it and I'm going to use that um, same editor. Everything in a project needs to have the same name. So the object is Speedboat. Um, the material file is also named Speedboat. If, if we create a, uh, a script it's going to be called Speedboat. So um, the physics. There's basically four kinds of physics. The first kind is nothing. You know, if you've got something that's a house that doesn't have any, any kind of movement attached, its physics type would be nothing. You just leave this blank. If it's a car, you would type vehicle. If it is a boat, you type watercraft. And if it's a something that flies, you would type aircraft. So in this case, we want it to float. So we're going to type After we tell it to be a watercraft, it's expecting a script. So, remembering that everything needs to be called speedboat, we're going to call this speedboat dot js, js for JavaScript. Nothing else needs to change. Go back into Altera. I've already created the, uh, the the script, and I will post the contents of the script in the YouTube posting. Get positioned out over the water. Okay, so now escape to call up the sandbox menu. We'll look under the uh, the watercraft. And there is the speedboat. And there we are. We're in the speedboat. And take C. Okay. Now we're looking at it from outside. So now you'll notice that the uh, the rotor is moving. And if I press W to move forward, it'll go faster. So there's also a sound file to this, but I've got it turned off, or otherwise uh, the background noises will drown out what I'm saying. But that's basically how to create a boat that floats. You can use WASD to make it turn. So if you had a uh, movie zoo story about a guy who needed to be in a boat, This would be a way to do it. Okay. As I said, I will, I will post the contents of that script. In fact, I'll post all of the basic scripts on on Anazu so that you can see how this, the, the different types of scripts for uh, different um, types of craft are made. That's it for this episode. Take care.